you know? And, and you know, I really want to speak about culture vultures too, though, you know, before we get away from that, you know, because I, I've had some interesting experiences. I, I, I was working with Dame Dash to publish his culture vulture book that, through my label that didn't happen, but I worked for Lior, I've worked with Vlad, I, I, I knew Vlad, not that much work with Vlad, but I've known him from way back and everything, you know? And for myself personally, like, I have a harsher view on these kind of people than anyone because I don't want to be affiliated with them just because we're sharing the same skin tone. I yeah. feel like people like that are a really bad reflection on me. And I, you know, I think Leroy's case is kind of complicated. Like I was talking to our dear friend Faze on Love about this, you know? Yeah. And um, you know, he said, well, he went back to the run DMC days and he was there as a fan checking them out and everything. And, and I said, yeah, but I said, just cause you, that means you're old. And you had good taste too in part. I mean, like, you know, like what did you do when you got the opportunity? Like when you got in the industry and you got the opportunity, what'd you do with it then? Did you help artists or did you get them into deals that helped you too? I'm not saying that you don't deserve to make money. Like people like me or we are gonna make money from working in the industry. Like I can't help artists if I can't make enough money from doing things, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it's not cut and dry, you know what I mean? Now, Vlad on the other hand, I got a real problem with them. I, I, I just, I'm a blast dude, man. Like, you know, I recently saw this video of his ex-employee. Have you guys seen that? I saw a little bit of it. I don't try to pay much attention to the dudes, to be honest with you, but I've seen, I've seen, I've seen what you're talking about, but I didn't watch it. Man, is it damning. I mean, just like he was running a sweatshop in there, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, one thing too is like, obviously I'm not against Vlad because he's white. That's some be some self-hatred shit, you know what I mean? I don't like DJ academics either. I mean, I think the way he exploited that whole Chicago, like keep track of the death thing and everything like that is pretty deplorable. You know what I mean? And his misogyny is through the roof and very, very unhealthy and, 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 and not good, you know, to be, uh, for that, to have so much of uh, strong reach as his platform, you know what I mean? But yeah, I think Vlad man is like, it's really foul that he's made so much money off the culture. He didn't feel like he felt so ego driven. He didn't feel he had to apologize for misquoting someone who uh, is so beloved by so many people as, as, as Mr. Farrakhan and his overall method of questioning. I mean, you've seen that P, uh, Pee Wee Longway video that's going around now recently. Like, Vlad goes, a lot of blue in that video, a lot of blue in that video. That's a crypt thing. And Pee Wee just keeps playing it off like three times, you know, and then Vlad goes, good answer. People get mad at me for asking the questions, but, you know, you don't got to answer. Come on, man. Like, you know, like your target, you know, I think that's a, a, a really weak excuse. Like you don't have to ask these probing, crim criminally indicting questions of people. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it's clip bait and it's going to get more views. You know what I mean? It's very, you know, I think it's inherently, uh, wrong and, and I think he shows a lack of respect for the culture in a lot of ways so I, I don't fuck with him and I think I think guys like Leroy that have made too much money off the industry and not and not you know like you know you're a white dude you should be more sensitive to certain things you know what I mean and 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 and, and you should help artists he's also done some good shit too he's helped some artists you know build their own things out and everything like that too so I think like with him is a little complicated but my personal experience they used me up and, and you know, and, and the only other thing I will say about Lear and his defense too, or whatever, is that one thing you can't say is that that whole time for most of his career, he had a black partner. Say what we want about dude too, you know what I mean? But like he was making a black man rich by all that like scandalous business practices they were doing against artists. So does that make it better? I, you, you know, not, well, not really to me, but you know. I'm, I'm, I appreciate your perspective. I want to get back on Vlad, if you don't mind, because what you said was 100 percent true and we've expressed those sentiments here on the platform but the thing is black artists still support the platform black artists still feed the content they they see it it's black and white as clear as day you have some artists saying that what they said on there didn't incriminate them even though been in court hearings heard it coming out of people's mouth saying that they've used interviews and they've used social media to get some of these dudes and and bring them down why do you think that the artists still even though all of this is out we're in this new age of revolution and the black renaissance and all this that you think that people go and still feed that platform that's a good question man I, you know I, I think it goes to the clout 
chase era that we're in, you know? I mean, he's got the numbers, man. You know, so, I mean, it's like, you know, like Godfrey. Oh, dude, man, when Godfrey said on your show that white people are culture vultures by breathing because <laughs> black men were the original man, I was like, because I'm supposed to do Lord Jamar's podcast. Lord Jamar, where you at? Uh, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready now. I was like, what he said, I died when he said that. Man. But that was a bar. But, uh, but I mean, you know, a lot of artists, they care about money and numbers. And, and even though there are more artists getting conscious now and everything like that, that's kind of a newer thing. And, and, and some people are doing it as a fashion, too. You know what I mean? Some people are jumping on the train real quick. And, and, and I mean, you know, things like the election and the, we've seen how lame cats are, man, recently. Like, you know, how like uns that's why I like your guys show, man. That's why I think you guys are one of the strongest platforms on, on hip hop on, on YouTube. Because you guys can talk about socially political things in hip hop together. Like a lot of these guys can't speak on it, man. And 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 these artists are out here like sticking their their foot in their mouth right and left and saying dumb shit, showing how ignorant they are. Uh, some artists, you know what I mean? Like, and there's been some great growth and positivity by other artists too. You know, I don't expect everyone to you know have all the knowledge or everything. You know, depending where people come from and their exposure level and things too. But it's the cloud era, man. I think. Look, you guys are doing the right thing. You know, a lot of people did stop supporting Vlad recently, you know, uh, when Lord Jamar left and Godfrey left and stuff like that. So, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and build a platform that can have, you know, to grow to the point where you have as many views as him and make him irrelevant. You know what I mean? I think, you know, but you need, artists need to support you. They need to come on your channel. They do need to stop fucking with him and that kind of thing. And I, I just think, you know, there's a lot of artists that aren't that conscious yet, so it, it, it could be slow, but I feel there's a movement against him. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel it's strong. I don't really know what his numbers are like or whatever, but I, I feel like he's pretty universally being viewed as, as a culture vulture right now. And, and like, it, it's tarnishing his legacy and his whole brand is built on his name. And so, I, you know, for longevity's sake, I don't, I don't think it's a good look for him, you know? Yeah, that's a good point that you make that, is, you know, it's Vlad TV, his name is like on that. A lot of people don't usually do that. They put a company up. But um, would you say though, because a lot of people you know, we'll call him an FBI agent or he's working with the uh, police. Would you say that that's the case? Or do you think that he is mainly just looking for that shop moment headline to get out to the people? He really don't care about the artists. He's looking to make money. Would you say that? Well, you know, it's interesting because we do find that the culture of like people getting arrested and then turning informant is so huge behind the scenes. I mean, like Whitey Bulger, like if you read the Whitey Bulger book, it's just fascinating. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so it's possible he got arrested doing some dumb shit, but I, I, we know he's greedy. That's apparent. You know what I mean? And I, I think it's a greed thing. I mean, I, I'm not one that, that goes often for like sometimes the conspiracy theory side of things per se, because there's so much right out in the open that you could see the greed and why people are doing things and things like that. Sometimes that extra element is, is just kind of like um, conjecture. Like, I don't think we have any evidence of that wouldn't blow my mind because you know if he did get arrested of something i'm sure he would like you know run to take a diving jump to uh tell on people to save his own soul but um since we don't have any evidence of that i think that's more like you know that's some good clickbait conjecture for uh youtubers to put up there or people to say and i also think there's also like a culture right now of people thinking everything's a conspiracy which yeah. you know and there's a lot of Foul should go on. It's right in the open. And there is conspiracies that come out later. I study history. You know what I mean? So, but um, people get a little carried away with that, I think, right now. What do you think about people or Vlad himself kind of denying behind the scenes that his interviews are even being used to indict people? Because he might not say as much, but he'll put somebody else. He'll post it up on his website. Somebody else saying, oh, his interview didn't, you know, this interview didn't indict me. How do you feel about that aspect of it? Do you think that Vlad is covering himself now? Yeah, I think that's his PR. I think, you know, if, if people start to see more and more artists getting arrested from doing Vlad interviews, that can't be good PR for the getting new artists to do interviews, right? You know what I mean? So I, I think that's his own PR machine. I mean, look, I haven't really worked with Vlad. I mean, very briefly back in the day, and I've known him for a long time, but I do have respect for what he built as a business. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I, I'm out respect for, for, um, for Leo, because I have seen Vlad build that up from the very beginning. And he's had a lot of great content on there. The reason that Lord Jamar 
who I have an immense amount of respect for, one of my favorite rap groups, Brand Nubian, and just, you know, you know, always really speaks, you know, I think um, straightforward and, you know, says some great shit. You know, he was doing this show for a long time and was cool with it because yeah. a lot of us enjoyed the content that Vlad was putting out there. He was obviously a fan of the culture. He was obviously, you know what I mean, like actually into it. So when you have some of these people on here, he can ask some good questions too. And look, I'm not going to lie. The dirt stuff is interesting. You know, I follow, uh, like I said, I think I discovered you guys from some spider loke thing. You know, I, yeah. you know, I was following the whole phase on Dave East thing. And I'm going to tell you, this is a hilarious sidebar, but because I, when I told when I was bugging Phase on to bug you guys to get me on the show, I was like, you know, and, and I'm not dissing Dave East because I love Dave East as an artist and everything, but I live in Harlem Cripplet and I've never seen Dave East, that's for damn sure. Uh -huh. But 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 I'm not dissing him. That don't mean that he don't have his affiliation or anything like that. But I just wanted to clown Phase on and be like, I ain't never seen it, it is a um but yeah, that would be my answer to that, man. I think he's putting his PR out. You know, the culture vulture and then um white people being a guest in hip hop kind of go hand in hand. We've had a conversation about Eminem and other white rappers. Are they guests in hip hop? And when do they not become guests and become a household name within hip hop? Do you think that white people are a guest within the culture of hip hop? How do you feel about that? I'm not mad at that analogy. I mean, I can see how some people might get offended or whatever, but I mean, like, it, if you look, if you study hip hop, I mean, this is a black art form. Also, many Afro Latinos, you know, were, were, yeah. or Latinos were involved from the very beginning as well. And there were white contributions almost from the beginning in certain aspects. But look at all the best rappers. I mean, you know, what color are they? I mean, come on, man. Like, you know, this is a black art form, like, like all the great American uh, music, blues, R and B. You know what I mean, like. You know, so this is a black art form and, and white people have been involved in different capacities as contributors since almost the beginning. I mean, like, you know, when when hip hop got out of the, the park jams, you know, the funky Manhattan East Side art clubs were like the ones that were playing the real hip hop. You know, at black clubs, it was probably more like dress code. And, you know, like, so, you know, there have been like white major contributions to the culture, things that Rick Rubin did, Scott Scorch, they're people, you know what I mean? But I mean, the sure percentages, numbers, I mean, you know, and I, I don't care what color an artist is like when I'm listening to them, you know what I mean? It doesn't have any effect on me, but there's very few white rappers that I really think are great. You know what I mean? Um, I think Eminem's very talented and, and he had a moment, but I don't know too many people that like roll around bumping Eminem. I certainly haven't for years or anything, you know, and no disrespect to him. I mean, he's mad talented, you know, but um yeah yeah i think white people should understand their place i mean you're like q-tip said like you're cool but don't prep the role i mean you know now there's so many white artists and so much of this like white college frat rap and all this like white culture of hip-hop it's easy to lose sight i guess for some people who grew up more recently and haven't been around as long or whatever but study your history and, and know what you're involved in and yeah i mean Definitely, I, I would I would co-sign with that. I mean, if somebody disagreed, I, I could understand, and, and, and that's cool. But you know, I don't know if I would personally say it, but I certainly wouldn't disagree with it. Are you a guest in hip hop? I mean, you grew up in Crenshaw, for crying out loud. A lot of brothers ain't grow up in no motherfucking place like Crenshaw around the hip hop era. Somebody like you would obviously, I would see, I, I would feel like may take offense to a comment like that simply because you grew up in that, like that was you. Um, have you ever been? called a guest in hip hop and how, how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like you're a guest in hip hop? It's a good question. I mean, I don't really feel like I am, but like I said, if somebody, if, if Lord Jamar told me that I wouldn't be offended, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, like growing up where I did was had a huge influence on me, you know what I mean? And so it made me respect, have a certain kind of respect for things and stuff too, you know what I mean? So, I mean, like I said, I mean, there's there's so few white people that have been so important to the culture. I mean, there's more coming and more and this and that, but. It, it, but one thing is like, I tell you, there's some some brothers ready to fight you on my side for it, though. You know what I mean? Like, you see who referred me, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just had like a, a lot of black people that I've worked with and or just know have always supported me because they felt I really am about the culture. You know what I mean? In the same way that they are, because I, I love it. I, I breathe it. I'm not, you know what I mean? My whole thing isn't to make money from it. I'm not, you know, I'm about the art and, um, supporting the art and you know i've also had a long history of working with a lot of like comedians i produced like a, a snaps album back in the day i've worked with like you know so black culture in general you know uh, mostly music but some uh, art i work with graffiti artists and street artists and you know so um you know, i don't consider myself that 
wouldn't be super offended if somebody said it, but I, I got some dudes ready to, you know, on my side, ready to, to back me up uh, uh, and disagree with you. Word. I'm going to talk a little bit of Dame Dash.